What we've got set up here is a workshop that you can use with your students. You can either do the workshop again with them or you can show it to them before doing your own activities. We've got different tools set up that Ben Quilty himself uses. So there's things like a spatula, a spoon, and these are actually cake making device well, tools that admittedly he does use himself. So now with this example we've opted to use a different type of pat paint. Ben Quilty uses oil paints. Uh, that's probably not as classroom friendly. So we're using acrylic paint. And instead of using the gel medium that he uses, we're using a glue. Now, it might not be as good, but it'll help enhance the um, consistency and make it dry quicker as well, especially when you're laying on thick paint, that's necessary. So now using our glue, we'll add the glue and we've put yellow and green acrylic paint. Put that in and we'll mix it through. So it's, you probably can't see it, but it's far more stickier now and it's much thicker. So it's drying to the paper as I'm moving it actually. Right. Just putting on a bit of paint now that we've mixed up and we're going to use a spoon to manipulate it. So you can use the back of the spoon, you can also use the front. So if you to move the front, move it around much more and you can create lines. You can smooth it out with the back and that's much more of a paintbrush look than the front, which is much harder. You could also push it up so that it holds and you create lines that are 3D, so it's becoming much more three-dimensional. So now we're going to use a wider spatula. And it's a bit like a spoon kind of thing as well. And we've included a bit more yellow so you can see the different colours. So this one's got a smoother back and it's also got quite a long end on, on there. That's quite harsh. So you can move it around quite easily. And you can spread that and you can still use and make different lines. Now Ben Quilty actually does make lines in his paintings and he doesn't make an effort to hide them. He actually uses them as part of his paintings. So you can smooth that over again and you can pull the paint up to make lumps and although our glue isn't as thick as what his would be, it would hold. Okay, so now we're going to use a, a knife like. This one's plastic and it's definitely appropriate for the classroom. Although these appear serrated and it has that effect, they're not actually very sharp at all. So we could make these, again, spreading it across. And it's already made grooves with them. We could go across again. And just depending on how you want to manipulate, you can make various different effects and again using lines and it creates a 3D effect where some have been cut out and some of the paint has been cut off and it's left blank canvas and then others have been moulded up higher. Okay so now we're using another spatula. This one's actually much softer and can be bended whereas the other one was actually quite hard so this one's probably a different manipulation again. So if we move it around you can see the different effects and you can slide it out so that it actually blends in quite well. So that'd be fat, flatter areas whereas you could have higher areas like up there. So again making that 3D effect and moving it around, moving it around quite easily as well.
So now we're just going back onto one of the paintings that we used where we used the spoon and we're now using the spatula with a different colour. So to just move it through and see the different effects that we could have. So trying to keep it the same lines again, but a bit differently this time. Yeah, Alicia's just lost all the lines. So the use of two different colours and the manipulation have given each of the paintings a different type of texture and body. It elevates the second dimension and brings it up rather than being a flat painting, just as Ben Quilty does.